Let's do MHC2. MHC2 is not found on every cell. It's only found on a specific population of cells. It works pretty much like MHC1. So this is MHC2 found on antigen presenting cells. And these are cells largely found in lymph nodes. Last time we talked about how, well, why would you want these different MHCs, and it's kind of like two different, I don't know if it's police forces is a good metaphor, it's like the difference between a police force and then a sheriff is a little bit bar, larger of an area, and then you've got your troopers, which are a larger area. So you've got different areas that you're looking for something. In this case, when I said with my cut on my wrist, TC cells are going to kill any infected cell around that area, but if that wound or that infection gets so large that it encompasses my lymph nodes now, well, that means I've got a huge infection. So it's a way of saying I've got a cell here that says there's an infection, another cell a long way away that's also looking for that same infection. If they both find that infection, then that means you have a huge infection. And you might want to have some way to pick up the pace a little bit. And that's exactly what the TH cell does. It's when it finds this target, it does two things. Makes memory. <coughs> also makes more active cells. So you got additional TH cells now. And they will release a signal that will come over. the T C cells. Tell them to pick it up a notch. Must be a big infection. Just so, because sometimes there's drugs that refer to this term, they're called cytokines. The TH cell will also come over here. And it's going to join with the B cell. Let's step back and uh, look at the figures. So MHC looks almost the same. Same kind of protein. Takes a little bit of the bacteria that's made it into the cell, puts it out on the cell surface. Here's the TH cell or the CD4. Finds that infected cell. Same kind of T cell receptor MHC thing down. <coughs> Once it's activated, it's going to make memory cells. It's going to make additional active cells. And those active cells are going to release cytokines, which will stimulate the T C cells. It's also going to activate the B cells. So this slide is just pointing us out that we're going back over to the humoral mediated system, which deals with bacteria outside of the cells. The first thing to note is this B cell will usually find some of the bacteria on its own. And that's called sensitized. The reason this B cell will find bacteria on its own is because that's a lymph node, kind of looks like a bean. I know it's not a good drawing of one. But basically, food is going to go in this direction. Going to head out in this direction. And B lymphocytes tend to hang out where the fluid is coming in. So they're generally the first one to watch fluid come into the lymph node, which means they'll be the first ones to see this bacteria. 
The next thing will be the T helper cells. And they're going to be in close proximity to each other, obviously, because they're going to actually need to come together at some point. And this is kind of jumping ahead, but one of the things that's going to happen once you release antibodies and tag these pathogens, you're going to need macrophages. You're going to need cells to basically gobble up these targets. And so the macrophages sit in a little bit deeper so that the B cell is sensitized, the T cell finds it and stimulates the B cell, they're going to mark the targets, and then the macrophages are going to consume or consume those debris, engulf the debris. Coming back down here is once this B cell is joined with this TH cell, it's called an activated cell. And once it's activated, just like everyone else here, It'll make memory. And it'll make active cells. In this case, it kind of changed their shape considerably, so they're called something else. They're called plasma cells. And those plasma cells will start making antibodies. Now hopefully you've left a little more room than I've left. I might need to cheat and erase or you can flip over to the other side. But before we do that, let's walk through this diagram. So in this diagram, up in the top left, is a B cell, and these are little antibodies sticking on the outside. And at this point, they don't have any antigens, but they've got the antigens drawn here. So the antigens bind to those antibodies, and that's called a sensitized B cell. They'll actually come together, the B cells will come together with the helper T cell, and once it does that, it's considered activated. It'll make memory cells, and then make additional active cells. And those active cells will grow and turn into what are called plasma cells. And they'll start making antibodies like crazy. Um, this is just a kind of a, it's actually a trick question. I was just pointing out that if the HIV virus attacks this TH cell, which is what it does do, it attacks the helper cell, that's pretty potent. If you're something that would like to disable the immune system, knocking out the TH would be a pretty good target because you prevent the TH from activating the TC cell and you prevent the TH from activating the B cell, so that's a pretty good target. But the reason it's a trick is because there are congenital conditions where the thymus is wiped out. In that case, you're knocking out the TH cell. That would be bad. But you're also knocking out the T C cell. So in HIV, when you knock this one out, at least you still have this guy. So no thymus would be far worse. No create a little bit of space because we need to talk about types of antibodies and how they kill. So we need to talk about types. We need to talk about how the antibodies fight. Fill up match, so it's IgM, IgA, IgD, IgG, and IgE. Now we're going to shorten them up a little bit as to what they do for the degree. IgM antibodies are the primary immune response, which means they're the first antibodies made.
that you could find out if somebody's seeing something for the first time by measuring the concentration of IgM antibody in their blood. If there's a high titer, titer is the word used for a concentration of a virus. If there's a high titer for IgM, it means they're seeing something for the first time. IgA tends to be specialized in epithelia. So epithelia, which are covering your external surfaces, are seeing things all the time. It's nice that they have their own kind of antibody to help them fight this. IgDs are the ones that are on the surface of the B cell. IgGs are old antibodies. And by old, I mean if you've had chickenpox, you don't have IgG antibodies floating in your head because you've been exposed to that so long ago that you have old antibodies. And then IgE are involved in histamine release and inflammation. It's a nice figure. It's actually not from your book, I don't think. It's really nice because it outlines how antibodies fight. And the first thing they can do is neutralization, which basically means surround and prevent from binding to cells. Viruses have to bind to receptors to trick the cell to taking it in so that they can replicate inside the cell. And so neutralize means to surround it so it can't bind to this receptor on the outside of the cell. Agglutination and precipitation are pretty much the same. Agglutination means to clump large antigens. Example this figure is showing is if you give someone the wrong blood type, antibodies will clump those cells together. And in fact, that's how you actually do a blood typing, is you put antibodies against type A proteins, against type B proteins, and against RH, which is also called type D. And if it clumps, it means the antibody found that target. Precipitation means to clump smaller things, smaller antigens. Viruses. Like virus. Where the term comes from, if a virus is small enough, it can just be considered to be dissolved in blood or dissolved in fluid, which means it can go anywhere. Well, if you clump it up enough, it turns more into a solid, it falls out of solution, or it precipitates, which means it's not going to be able to flow around nearly as well. The other thing on this diagram is you can activate complements. And it's for slightly better reason than just making you write it again. But do write it again. Don't just put C above. Put um, stimulate. Wait, put what you put above tags for phagocytes, puts holes in target, stimulates inflammation. So above, you had complement, four complements. Holds in bacteria, causes phagocytes, and stimulates 